to my channel today i am taking on this kitchen i hate hate this kitchen um this kitchen is i can't tell you how old it is i just know it's super old and the, the <laughs> there's some cupboards that are mismatched some of them are too long for the cabinet um anyway so but i am going to be doing quite a bit of work we're going to transform this space and make it look amazing so the first job that we're going to be tackling, which I've already started, is the kitchen cabinets. Um, you can see in the corner here that I'd started. I started with a different kind of pro uh, product and it didn't quite go according to plan, so it all got ripped up. So we're going to start by taking off all this, um, by covering all these cabinets, not taking them off. We're going to be covering every single one of it. And we're going to be using contact paper. So I'm just going to show you my own easy way of doing it because my cabinets have this groove in them. It's not straight. I am using this contact paper that I got from Amazon. I am going to link it in the description bar below. It is a lot in one. I think it is 24 by 393 inches. And then obviously you need a knife. I need a pencil to draw a straight line or well, straight-ish line so I can cut. And then I use this also as my ruler, but you can use a normal ruler. I have a scissors and then obviously this. So if you, you can buy a kit that comes with this too, and I think it came with something else. Um, um, yeah, so you could buy it as a kit or you could just buy, you could use a credit card. Anything will work, um, but this exacto knife is very important. So to start, I am just cutting the paper to size. I am using my little ruler thingy, the scraper that I'm using as a ruler um, to kind of cut the paper because the, the paper comes with lines on it. But if I'm cutting away from the line, I like to use this just to make sure that I get a straight line. I can't cut straight to save my life. So this helps. Um, and then I just kind of roll it quite lightly on top of the, the door. Um, and you see that I'm going into it now and trying to press it into the groove. That's the first bit that I want to get done first, obviously, is the groove. Um, so I'm making sure that that bit is nice and uh, that I, I cover that bit first properly. I'm using the, I'll call this the smoothing tool. So I'm using the smoothing tool to kind of make sure that I have no bubbles um, and that the paper is nice and smooth in that middle groove first. So that's the first bit that I tackle. Um, and the smoothing tool really came very handy because obviously, as you can see, I'm using it to kind of make sure that I take all the bubbles out, make this bit really, really nice and smooth. And then once that's done, I cut a V on all the sides. So the, all four sides of the door, just to make sure that when I'm folding it in, it's nice and smooth. So this kind of guides me. And then once that's done, there's a second groove on this cabinet. As you can see, when I'm, if you see when I'm using this smoothing tool, you can see it forming. It's very subtle, but it's there. And I also wanted to bring that out as well because I just wanted to make sure that that was there. So I am kind of making sure that I get that formed as well before I push it all the way out on the sides of the drawer. Um, that was, and, and this paper is quite forgiving, I would say, because you can pull it up and pull it, put it back on again. Um, and you don't, you know, it will stick quite nicely. So that's what I'm doing just to make sure I don't have any lines or any grooves or um, no, no lines or no bubbles. I will lift it up and put it back down again if I have to, but it made the process really, um, nice and straightforward for me. Uh, and it was easier to kind of maneuver. I'm using a matte paper and I don't know whether that's the reason why it is like this, but I find that they tear quite easily also. Um, I don't know whether it's because mine was matte and I didn't get a gloss one because I didn't want a glossy finish. I wanted a matte finish for the kitchen. So once the sides are done, uh, once the, that the front is done, I turn it upside down and then I just fold in the first side in. So this is the first side. It was easier to fold and then I cut all the excess out. That's what I do next. I cut the excess out, but I leave a little bit so that I can fold it to make sure that that nice and secure on the edges of the of the door once i do that then i will cut the i will fold in the other side and then cut the excess again so to cut the excess on this side i make sure that i leave enough to fold it across as you see me doing right now and then i will cut off what's left because i really don't want like too much paper sticking on the side i just don't think that that's a good look i want to try and keep it as nice and neatly as i possibly can um so i cut all the excess that i need to cut off and then make sure that i have a really nice uh, straight line to kind of fold it so that it gives it a really nice look to the end i'll let you watch how i do the next side Open eye. 
Feel the waves cut through me, hypnotized by the sounds I'm breathing in. Hold tight, hold tight, chemicals collide. Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. Dripping lights, paint the. I on the hinges. I use my exacto knife to cut the shape of the hinge just to make sure that I have that little corner covered as well and it doesn't disrupt the paper. And yeah, and that's it. And you just cover the rest of it. And then I use my blow dryer to go over it and make sure that it is all nice and smooth and stuck properly. And yeah, and that's the process. It's super simple to do. It it, it takes a lot of patience, I won't lie, um, but it is not a difficult task at all. Um, on the faces of the cabinet, I just use strips of paper. Um, yes, I, I am busy dancing because that's the only way I go through this with some music. Um, yeah, so I'm using strips of paper. This uh, drawer face that I'm covering doesn't come off. So I had to cover it right where it was. And I literally just used a strip, covered it, and then cut the sides just to make sure that it was nice and smooth. On the other ends of it, and that's exactly the same thing that I did with all of the face, just using strips, cutting off to, shape, uh, to size, and then, um, yeah, and then just covering it. It is super simple to do, and it makes such a big difference to, to your space as well. So once all the face is covered, I put the doors back in and I tend to do like two doors and then do the face and then cover it. This is the difference. Can you see the difference? It is looking so great. The way the kitchen just brightens up is crazy. So day two, I have already started covering some of it on the other side now and I am doing another cupboard. I thought I will show you again how I do the doors again, just to make sure that you got it right. So to start again, you peel off the paper and just lay it on the on the face of the door and then smooth the middle bit out cut the sides um and then yeah so smooth the middle bit i'm going really far i'm going faster than how i'm doing it so you smooth the middle bit just to make sure that the dent in the middle is nice and smooth then you do the sides and then at this point you've already cut your v on all four sides you tuck it in make sure that you take off all the excess paper and that's it done i am on my last drawer this is day three so it took me three days to do this but not three days of just doing it i was doing other stuff and i am super happy as you can see that it is all done it took me three days to do the kitchen by myself but it was like four three four hours a day and i just got it finished um to tackle the floors i hate these tiles they are absolutely horrible as you can see they are really really terrible tiles i'd removed the fridge and realized that that one corner hadn't covered but eventually i did um but for the floor instead of using pill and stick because i didn't want to do that i am using vinyl flooring in session vinyl sheet flooring this is easier to use as far as i'm concerned you literally just spread it and then i use double-sided uh, carpet tape on each side um to to stick it to the floor and that's it so i stick it on all four sides with double-sided tape and that was the end of it. It was so, so simple. I cut little excess and then I will go around and exacto knife is what i know it to be um yeah but once you're using these knives it's so easy to do this took me about 30 minutes and the kitchen was done and the flooring i think in my opinion i think it's more cost effective than using uh the pill and stick ones that you use and the individual ones as well 
I just find that this was much easier to do. I've used this in my old house. I use it in the bathroom and it it holds up really, really well. In somewhere where you have a lot of water, I would say use um, a sealant to go around it just to make sure that if you're using it in the bathroom, say, use a sealant to go around it. Um, that tends to help as well. So day five, we're on day five now. Um, the floor is all done. I love, love, love how it looks. And as you can see, I've already started adding contact paper on the countertop. So this is marble contact paper. I'm using the brand that I know is called DC Fix. I will link it in the description bar for you as well. And I love this paper because it is very durable. I've used it on so many DIYs and it holds out. You can clean it. It is the best, I, in my opinion, as far as companies for um, contact paper is concerned. And I'd done uh, most of the countertop, but then I ran out. So I had to buy some and I got them off of Amazon. And it, it's so easy to do. So I just followed the shape of the countertop. On this side, I had to cut a V. I wish I had found this wood, this piece of wood when I started doing the, the cupboard, the uh, doors, because it would have made my life so much easier. It was so easy to just use it because it was longer to cut the, um, the paper. And it's literally just following the same process, cutting it, taking the the back off and then sticking it down i tend to because you can see my kitchen counter has that rice at the back i did all the rice first um and then so that when the paper goes on it sits nice and flush to the back of the of the countertop i hope that makes sense but that's how i did mine um and it was super super simple to do To cut off the excess here, I found a little nifty trick that I thought helped me. I'm just using this scraper and I'm following it with my X-Acto knife and just going nice and clean and straight and sturdy. I just found that this made it so easy for me to get a nice crisp, a crisp line. So to finish it off, I am using um, a sealant all the way around the sink just to make sure that I protect it from like water going, sipping into the contact paper and lifting it up. Um, and this just creates also a really nice finish. So all I'm doing is just running the sealant all the way around. I'm using a sealant that's suitable for water, obviously. Um, I will link it in the description bar below for you. And then I'm just using my finger wet in water and just going through it to make it nice and neat. So this is what the finished look is. I absolutely love how the kitchen turned out. It is so much brighter, so, so much brighter. I love the way the space looks. I've kept the decor really minimal for now, um, but I will do something with it later on. But I really just wanted to show you what the, how I did this process. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you stopping back. If you are new, please do not forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.